According to supply managers in the nine Mid-America states, how is the economy performing? Our survey, our March survey of supply managers, manufacturing supply managers in nine states, the Mid-America region, was still a very strong 68.9. That's down slightly from last month's 69.6. So it's a very, very strong reading, indicating that the manufacturing sector is proceeding with very strong growth. Uh, we saw, we're still, even with the growth that we've seen over the last several months, uh, since April, actually. April, we hit a downturn in 2020. Since then, it's been trending upward. We're still 4 to 5 percent below pre-COVID levels, so we still got more to go. I expect us, by the end of the year, to be back, back to pre-COVID levels uh, in terms of employment and overall economic activity. Uh, one thing that really hit in this survey was uh, disruptions, supply disruptions, that would be supply bottlenecks, for example. Eight out of ten purchasing managers reported that they were being hit hard by supply disruptions. One out of four uh, indicated shipping and transportation issues were having some significant I uh, impacts on their ability to grow their uh, overall economic outlook, output. And here I bring up the graph you'll see there. Uh, the Creighton number, that's the Mid-American number, as you see in there in blue, that's looking very strong. Down again slightly. The, the U.S. number will come out later on this morning. That'll be in the red there. I expect it to be probably moving much like ours sideways, maybe a bit down. This is going to be in a very a range indicating strong growth in the months, ahead, months weeks and months ahead. What were the hiring trends? Uh, hiring for March was likewise very strong. Uh, the number was uh, 60, uh, the number was 60, the index of 60, and this down from February is 65.6, but still in a, in a range that I would call pretty strong growth. Hiring remains uh, well into a positive uh, growth range. We're going to see, uh, again, we're still down about 4 to 5 percent, depends on the states uh, across the region. Nebraska is much more. Uh, much closer to pre-COVID levels. Minnesota, much further away. Minnesota is probably six to seven percent below pre-COVID levels. So it depends on the state, but overall the region is down about, in terms of employment, about four to five percent. Uh, and if you look at uh, since bottoming out in April, we've gained about 7.4 percent. So since April, the, the manufacturing economy has been on a very strong pace to add back the jobs, but still below pre-COVID levels. What is causing supply bottlenecks? We're, we're seeing, of course, uh, this month, uh, uh, or in March, we saw, of course, the closing of the Suez Canal, and that, of course, created some real issues uh, across the globe. But this was, we, we our, our supply managers, 33% reported supplier bottleneck, uh, b production bottlenecks. In other words, their suppliers are having problems keeping up with overall demand. 29% uh, reported uh, cutbacks among suppliers and, and actual shutdowns. And uh, about 27%, a little over one out of four, reported shipping and transportation issues. So we're seeing whether the ports in Los Angeles, the ports in New Orleans, across the uh, U.S., we're seeing real transportation issues, getting those supplies uh, from the ports, but also from the companies into the manufacturers that we're surveying. What inflation trends are you noticing? Inflation is running still much stronger than we'd like to see, uh, reflective of the expanding uh, U.S. economy, expanding uh, regional economy. The March number was 94.0, and that's down from slightly from February's 95.2. That's those are some of the strongest readings we've recorded in the in the uh, two plus decades we've been running this survey here at Creighton University. And of course, we've got another stimulus package coming out. We'll see the impacts of the Biden $1.9 trillion stimulus package. Now we're talking about another stimulus package in terms of infrastructure. That will likewise have some significant impacts, upward pressure on prices. I expect the inflation numbers that will be coming out to be much stronger than the Fed's really anticipating and more, more than they're comfortable with. So we'll keep an eye on inflation. The confidence index was up fairly significantly, up to 58, March is 58, up from February's 50. So things are looking very strong out there, 
But again, accompanying that strength is, is higher inflationary pressures. What impact is trade having? Trade was uh, still strong. The export number was 63.9. That's down from 70.5 in February. I expect it to be down more than that, just given the issues of the bottlenecks, supply bottlenecks and tra uh, transportation issues. Imports were up 64.0, and that's up from February is 58.3. So all in all, we're seeing trade continuing to move along. And again, that's surprising to me. We've got a dollar value, the value of the dollar, of course, uh, with a cheaper dollar, which uh, we've seen some very, the dollar's been very weak. That really incentivizes or makes U.S. goods more competitively priced abroad, and that is, of course, good. Well, we're gonna see some strengthening of the dollar in my judgment. Uh, the delivery speed was one of the big, big, uh, issues coming out of our March survey, it's up to a record level, indicating that we're seeing the great, largest number of delays in delivery of supplies and raw materials to the manufacturers that we've seen since we began the survey in the early 1990s. And that's 81.3 again, that's up from 73.5 in February, so we've got some real uh, issues there and that'll, again, we'll see inflation follow on with that as well and probably have some impacts on lowering exports and lowering imports. What are indicators to watch? Uh, like we've talked about in previous months, keep an eye on the 10-year Treasury, the yield on that. It's up 80 basis points, 8 tenths of 1% since November. That's, as that, in, in, that uh, yield goes up, indicating greater and greater inflationary pressures, I expect it to probably break maybe break 2% by the, the fourth quarter of this year. We're, and you can get that c contemporaneous. Uh, first time claims for unemployment insurance comes out every Thursday. That number has been coming down a bit. It's still in the 650,000 to 700,000 range. It needs to come down to 500,000. It's gonna take a while to get back there, especially with the incentives that are in contained in the trend the Biden um, stimulus package, which does to some degree incentivize higher levels of unemployment and increasing claims for those unemployment benefits. Uh, keeping an eye on the employment report that comes out this Friday the, from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, that number is probably not gonna be as strong as we'd like to see. It, it's uh, somewhere between 100 and 200,000 would be a pretty good number. It could be below 100,000, that would be a concern. Consumer price index is gonna be the number to watch in April. That comes out on April the 13th. I think the CPI, once we see, those numbers are gonna be, I won't say eye popping, but they're gonna be much higher than what uh, the press and economist and the Fed is really counting on, probably in the range, range of year over year, two and a half to 3% now, and that'll be easily at, uh, obtained or attained. What is the economic outlook? The outlook is the Federal Reserve continue to hold the line in terms of uh, uh, short-term interest rates, even with the higher inflationary uh, numbers that we're seeing. The PPI is gonna be increasing, the CPI increasing, the interest rates, we will see higher interest rates in the weeks and months ahead. The stimulus, the next package around that the Biden administration is attempting to pass the infrastructure bill it will likely be passed. That's going to be another uh, factor that pushes up inflationary pressures and stimulates the economy. And in my judgment, a little stronger in stimulus than we'd like to see. We're going to see now, we've been seeing a swoosh economy, meaning uh, an economy that's being uh, growing at a reasonable rate. It's likely to turn into a V-shaped recovery along with higher inflationary pressures. Short-term interest rates will rise, but those will not come until the fourth quarter of this year, 2021. Uh, and of course, uh, I think uh, one issue that we don't talk about, business travel, we think the vaccine is opening up the nation. It is for consumer travel and family travel, but not for business travel. Businesses are gonna continue to do Zoom conferences. We're not gonna see as much as we'd like to see. So that, Look for uh, the outlook is going to continue to be not good for business travel, and that's going to hurt the hotel and uh, hotel and restaurant industry, business, leisure and hospitality. will be under pressure. We'll not be back to pre-COVID levels, not this year. It'll be into 2022 before we see that industry recover. And so 
that's, that's it for the month, the month of March from our supply managers in the Mid-America region. Thank you for joining in this broadcast, this, this video, until we meet again the first business day uh, of the month of May. May your economic cup runneth over. Thank you.